It's been a very active week. Let's take a look at some of these rainfall totals just over the last 72 hours. In fact, within the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, southeast of Dallas just last night, picked up six to 10 inches of rain. They had numerous stranded high water rescues out there in that region. In fact, they even had homes that got some water, some flooded homes out there with very heavy rain within the overnight hours with that stalled frontal boundary just to the south of there, that little bit less amounts towards the Waco into the Temple, Texas region, about two inches of rainfall over the last three days. And out west, they've been seeing some pr pretty significant winds out there. They do have some wind, wind advisories and even some high wind watches across portions of Southern California and Northern California. But look at that, folks. We've got widespread winter activity for much of Colorado and much of Kansas here going into Nebraska all the way down into Oklahoma where you could actually see some sleet even freezing rain as far south as the Texas Panhandle even Lubbock could have a light glazing on the roadways heading into tomorrow morning by that significant cold front let's take a look at the temperatures right now for your Saturday afternoon you can see where that first initial front and then we, of course we have a reinforcing shot of colder air Temperatures are in the single digits, if not teens, up there in Montana. And that cold front is diving in the upper 20s there in Denver. And already at almost the freezing mark, they are in portions of Kansas. And then those temperatures will continue to plunge, really activating going into early part of next week. So I'm pretty excited because now I have my own PAL weather app for those that you don't know. Uh, you can literally have pal in the pocket and i got it on both devices you can find it in on uh, android and apple so you can just go to the app store and download it for yourself or i created this convenient link you can click on in the description below and you can download it there and if you hadn't subscribed to my channel i do actually do daily updates on this channel so Please do so if you haven't already. So let's take a look at, take your bat because yeah, we got some cold air coming, but overall, if you take the averages just between now and the first 27 days of October, it's actually been overall a pretty warm October for October standards, much of the country. In fact, 85%, those only areas across the Southeast is experienced below average temperatures. So yeah, this is gonna be a significant change of what you've seen really all month long to take you all the way through into your Halloween. So later on this afternoon, this is about four o'clock. So we had that rain overnight in Texas, going through Dallas this morning. I think it starts to come out of that region, pushing into East Texas, goes into a good part of Arkansas by then, into Kentucky right around southern portions of Illinois and even Indiana starts getting into the rain. And then there's the snow continuing to fly in Colorado. Yeah, Denver could pick up a pretty significant snowstorm with this system. The latest update is eight to 12 inches of snow for that region. But you can see where the cold front is, right? That secondary surge, that pink on the map, that is ice, folks. So you know that means business when you got some ice showing up on the map. For October even for the Texas Panhandle and I think that only it increases as that cold front as the colder air drains on the back side and that will provide even additional lift along that secondary cold blast so now we got a renewed threat for these areas within East Texas and the portions of Central Texas and North Texas going to Oklahoma through the Arkansas region as well as into Missouri and then some beneficial rains will spread up into Indiana as well as into Ohio eventually even parts of West Virginia and heading into Pennsylvania and then further to the north with our snowstorm really kind of wind up here yeah snow is going to be continuing to fly across portions of Kansas as well as into Iowa and then that that expansion of a just a sleet and some freezing rain especially in the morning hours along that potent cold front and going into sunday morning that that ice continues to drop a little bit further south that's why they do have some winter weather advisories in the good part of the texas panhandle and even into portions of west texas so if you're on the roadways especially for your truck drivers out there 
high alert because obviously this is late October. You're not used to seeing <laughs> winter weather on the road. So definitely take it easy, especially for these areas that even have like a glaze of ice. That's always the most dangerous because you're not expecting it. You're just going at your, your normal speed and that's where things could get turned awry pretty quickly uh, if you're not expecting ice you know, on the roadway. So please take it, use extreme precaution if you're gonna be out in the roadways, especially, you know, in the morning hours. But yeah, here's the latest update from the National Weather Center in Colorado. Wow, look at that pretty significant snow, even for them. <laughs> Bragg Breckenridge, easily another foot of, snow, foot of snow into Vail, all the way through even Denver there, eight to 12 inches. This will definitely be the most significant snow they've seen so far this season they really haven't picked up much of anything even colorado springs will get in the action as well so this is definitely a significant system even some three to four, you know five inch marks just to the east of there and that snow will continue to spread into portions of kansas and even iowa here but here's where the actual cold front will be going into sunday morning so we've been talking about this for a while and typically you know, cold, the colder air is shallow and it typically travels faster than what the models actually say. So now that we have the high resolution guidance kind of zoom in, notice where the cold front, this is actually Sunday morning. Most of the data actually two days ago didn't have this front that far south until Sunday night. So it has sped up big time and it's actually even a little bit colder than what a lot of the data said it was two days ago. And that's what you'll find with these even more impressive, stronger fronts. The stronger the front is, typically it travels faster and typically it's colder than what the models actually depict. But yeah, this is gonna be a significant change of what I showed you for much of October and then what we're gonna be faced against over the next couple of days. So yeah, this is definitely gonna be a taste of winter for sure for much of the country. As, and this is gonna be some, some pretty significant winds along with it as well. And one of the reasons why we knew it was gonna be as strong and travel faster as the teleconnections. Whenever you see a sharp drop, I mean, we had deviations below five here, that is a significant dip and that tells you it's going southbound all the way to Mexico, which is what I've been talking about. And it's going to be stronger and go faster. So it basically takes a beeline into Texas all the way down into Brownsville, even into Mexico. But notice the trend, right? It, it quickly moderates and rebounds. So it drastically you know, lifts up. And then as that storm system, as the colder pocket of air pulls eastbound, it will tend to moderate some. So you don't be as, as significant as far as like below average standards, but you're still gonna get locked into the cold front. You're not gonna miss out. It just won't be as potent as far as the extreme measures that most of the central states will be. Cause I think Denver actually is gonna be ended up around 10 degrees with that snowpack after that's all said and done and once skies to kind of clear out where I think they're gonna be bottoming out around 10 degrees from this system. But between now and then, here's the rainfall estimates over the next 48 hours. So you've seen some pretty significant totals already just in the last three days, right? So now this is additional rainfall, right? So yeah, so a lot of these areas have actually experienced a very dry summer waiting for that El Nino to kick in. And now it's like feast or famine across these regions. Now you can't get the rain to stop and it's still coming with a vengeance with another one, two, possibly three inches of rainfall. Well, with along that secondary front across these areas into uh, central Texas, heading up to Eastern Oklahoma, getting into Arkansas through Western Tennessee. These, these areas will get hit hard with another two to four inch swath of heavier rains and those rains will extend in through indiana and illinois as well as ohio and even start sneaking up into the mid-atlantic region getting up into pennsylvania to the dc region and heading up into new jersey getting up into vermont new hampshire and then by the time we head into the northern portions of new england yeah most of that actually will be in the form of snow again so here's here's some of the snow that's going to be left over it's still to come from this system we've already had a a pretty good snows across these regions, but this is additional snow 
with one over a foot of snow for the mountain regions. Like I mentioned, I think Denver ends up around uh, almost a foot of snow from this particular storm. And these will be less amounts as it extends through Nebraska, getting into Iowa. But nonetheless, they will see some snow as far south as Kansas and even some dusting flurries even out into Oklahoma. But as you further south, it's going to be in the form of sleet. This is your sleet, folks. This is pretty significant for even late October across Kansas, across Oklahoma, and even into the Texas Panhandle and far extreme portions of West Texas. They were on the Childress region. Yeah, they could be picking up some, some definitely some sleet in that neck of the woods. And where it's not sleeting and where it's not snowing, they are gonna have to deal with some a glaze of ice on the roadways, which could even be more dangerous across these regions than the Western Panhandle of Oklahoma and and the texas panhandle and far extreme portions of say the lubbock regions this is why they have these winter weather advisories in place because of what could still to come with you know rain falling up or falling and freezing on contact across these regions and then going into monday so as the cold front will continue to dive southbound when you wake up on monday morning there's that significant drop in Colorado. Some mountain regions could be below zero, folks. You know, that's a significant air mass with that snowpack, adding likely another 10 degrees lower with the snowpack on the ground in those areas. But yeah, it's gonna be every bit of winter for those areas. And all that blue, that is your freezing mark. And that will only extend a little bit further south as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday timeframe. But going into that Monday afternoon, after that second front, this is where the rain could be going into Monday morning, extending into Monday afternoon. It's starting to wind down in North Texas. Now it shifts into Central and South Texas. And then that feeder band of rain will be extending right along this cold front through the Tennessee Valley and through portions of the Northeast. And then going into that Tuesday. So this is your Halloween folks. And so it's pretty, pretty uh significant wet snow all the way through to halloween but then it dries out which is actually a good thing because a lot of you obviously have plans on halloween and outdoor plans and for the trick-or-treater so it's going to be cold for sure as you wake up on halloween morning likely some of the coldest temperatures in many years for halloween is going to be on tap is those that colder air and at least likely 60 to probably 65 percent of the country will actually be at the freezing mark. This is definitely pretty significant, especially of what you've seen, you know, as of late. But going into that Wednesday, say Thursday time frame, next week we tend to warm up. So we're going to be looking at some pretty clear skies behind that system starting out on, on uh, Halloween, but then even it gets drier on, on Wednesday. And the, probably that's going to be your coldest day as far as widespread freeze for a lot of your areas getting a first freeze as the skies tend to clear out you tend to lower those temperatures even further but then all eyes will be trending back up to the pacific northwest so not much rain to speak of until then but by the time we get into the middle of next week these temperatures are going to be rapidly warming out west but it's also going to bring another significant storm system coming in from the pacific northwest and these areas will start get hit with some heavier rainfall by then but those are the temperatures going to that wednesday right so these are your actual temperatures i think this is when we sort of like quote unquote bottom out with the coldest most widespread of the freezing mark as that could you know for these areas especially further south you'll probably see the first frost first freeze warnings issued over the next day or two planning for this significant you know cold blast for this early so definitely if you have some sensitive plants out there you need to take extra precaution for that and cover them up or bring them inside because many areas will likely see you know their first frost and freeze of the season and here's the canadian i mean the canadian is typically a colder bias model and i'm showing you the extremes here because i don't think it gets this cold it's not making it to 29 degrees in austin that's just not happening folks but i was just going to show you some of these extremes that the, the the models are spitting out with this uh cold front <laughs> but uh but yes going into next week here's the significant changes because we're going to have a 
we're going to have a building ridge out west and that's going to slowly shift so it's going to moderate the colder air will moderate as it shifts eastbound and then the ridge will be building across the west and by the time we head into next sunday most everybody <laughs> will be likely above average temperatures by then as there's going to be a drastic change from what you've experienced you know this sunday then going into next sunday as we we rapidly warm up on the back side and as we rapidly warm up on the back side we start to dry out on the back side so it's going to be a much calmer week ahead heading in the next week and a drier week and then all eyes will be out into the pacific northwest by midweek as we'll have training rains for you guys up there into seattle and washington and northern portions of california by then so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, do like this video definitely watch my uh, winter forecast after this update and catch me next update wire protect you before and after the storm